just becoming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything. I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Oh, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. I think basically both SpaceX and Tesla from the beginning uh, were probably less than 10% likely, likely like to succeed. Uh, in the beginning, I wouldn't, actually wouldn't let my friends invest because I don't want to lose their money. Yes, I don't want to lose their money. We, we almost did that at SpaceX, actually. So we, I budgeted for three flights. But typically, I, I did have a plan where I, I had, a, had, had money from PayPal. I had about 180 million from PayPal. And I thought, you know, I'll allocate half of that to SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City. And um, that should be fine. But, but then what happened is um, things cost more and took longer than I you know, thought, so I had a choice of either put the rest of the money in or the company's going to die. And that's so I ended up putting all the money in and borrowing money for rent from friends. We came very close to both companies not succeeding in 2008. We had three failures of the SpaceX rocket, so we were zero for three. Uh, we had the crazy financial recession, like the Great Recession. Um, the Tesla financing round had fallen apart because it was pretty hard to raise money for the startup car company if GM and Chrysler were going back there. If the board boards hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount the trip. You couldn't have gone on at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount the trip. I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, not, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones were there was no, no point behind them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. So if I could have found something better, then we would have maybe had less than three failures. A successful entrepreneur is probably coming all sizes, shapes, and flavors. An obsessive nature with respect to the quality of the product. It's very important. Really focus on making a product that your customers love. Um, it, it's so rare that you can buy a product and, and you love the product when you, when you bought it. The, this is, this is, there are very few uh, things that fit into that category. And if you, if you can come up with something like that, your, your business will be successful for sure. If you get it such that your customers want you to succeed, then, then you probably will. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, sp a small office and we slept on the couch. And we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we were so hot up we had just one computer. So this, the, the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. It's really a mindset, not to decide. We're going to try to do things uh, differently. We should do things differently just because they're different. They need to be different and better. But I think you just have to sort of decide. Let's think beyond the normal stuff and, and have an environment where that sort of thinking is encouraged and rewarded and where it's okay to fail as well. Because when you try new things, you try this idea, that idea, well, a large number of them are not going to work. And that has to be okay. If every time someone comes up with an idea that has to be successful, you're not going to get people coming up with ideas. Just showing up is half the battle. <laughs> You gotta try hard to do it, and don't be afraid of failure. You also need to be rooted in reality, um, so you shouldn't, it, it's easy to get high in your own supply. You gotta not be afraid to innovate, but also don't delude yourself into thinking something's working when it's not. Or you're gonna get fixated on a, on a bad solution. Yeah, you know, don't be afraid of new arenas. Uh, you know, you can get a book, you can learn something, and, and experiment with your hands and make it happen. Find a way or make a way to, to get something done. Even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Uh, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. I seem to have a, a high uh, innate uh, drive. And that's been true even since I was a little kid. I uh, really have a very strong drive. It's all sorts of risky things to make it better. Why do I do this? I'm so crazy. One of the things that uh, I remember most from my childhood is um, I was, I think, 
six or something, maybe around that age. I was just learning to read, basically. Um, and I was on ground at one afternoon and prevented from trying to uh, play with uh, my cousins who live on the other side of town. And I disagreed with this, so I escaped from my, my nanny and uh, walked across town. And I could really, I could barely read the road signs. Uh, so, I mean, irrespective this was, I mean, this was obviously a very foolish thing to do because something terrible could have happened to me. I could have been kidnapped or run over or something like that. But I was so determined to uh, go clear with my, my cousins that I, I basically walked clear across the city, the capital city. My mom got really freaked out because uh, she saw me, just as I was getting to my cousin's house, she saw me walking along the sidewalk. And, and, and flipped out because uh, she didn't know how I got there. Then I saw her and I ran and climbed up the tree and um, and I, uh, I wouldn't come down until they promised they wouldn't punish me and that I could be with my cousin. That quite my sort of drive to get it done is somewhat disconnected from hope, enthusiasm or anything else. I just, I, I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm, motivation, I just, Give it, give it everything I've got, irrespective of, of what the circumstances may be. People tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got, you know, a mortgage to pay and kids to support, and that if you were to deviate from your job, that well, how are you going to feed your family and pay the rent? And, okay, that's understandable. But let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever. Yeah. What, what are you? What are you risk? You know, you're not going to start. I mean, it's, it's really certainly not in any kind of modern economy. It's, it's so easy to earn enough money just to live somewhere, and it's very, very easy to do. So I don't know what, you know, what are they only afraid of? They're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think. Or, but people should be, be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. It's time to take risk. Uh, you don't have, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't have, you don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. So you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that. Uh, before you, before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. <laughs>